great state of Texas is the site of today's lesson. Fishing in the wind can be difficult at best. In today's lesson, Larry ties on a rattling diamond shad and covers water, searching for largemouth bass in East Texas Rattlers. He's a dandy, too. This one here is a real fish. I mean, a real fish. Oh, I got him with one hook right in the nose. Just barely got him. It's one of them you don't want a horse. You'll have a lure right in your face. Look at that. Right in the nose. Just barely skin hooked. Boy, I was in a tough spot, I'll say that. That's a good fish right there. Good sure he didn't straighten my little hook out. A little point right there run off the bank and there seemed to be several fish on it. Usually when you uh, find a little area that's got a lot of fish in it, that's what it'll be. It'll be either a point, or a underwater hump, or an isolated grass bed, a small area that's got uh, something to hold a school of fish. You can just go down a shoreline and catch fish on this lure, but when you catch more than one, I mean, doing back-to-back -back casts, that's usually a good place to fire up your big engine and go back and make another drift. I don't like casting a lot of certain lures into the wind. And that's why I'd rather go back and drift through an area and be real quiet and then fire up the big engine, idle all the way around it, and make another drift. If you find a small, concentrated area of fish, this usually indicates the presence of a point, an underwater hump, an isolated grass bed, or some other feature that is holding a school of fish. After drifting through that area, start up the main motor and circle around wide setting up to make another drift through that same area. There he is. Oh, and he feels like a good one, too. Hear that thing rattling coming through there. Listen at that wind howl. Well, you're, you're a beginning anyway. Can't get off either, can you? Not a bad start. You know, one of the hardest things for a fisherman to do is figure out what to do when the wind's are howling like this. The only thing I know to do is just turn the trolling motor on, tie me on a bait like a diamond shed or a spinner bait, and cover some ground, move on. Just go right on down the shoreline fishing anything you can see that might hold a few bass. Because it's so hard to stop and fish little detail stuff when that wind is a galen. Excellent choice of lures for windy days. Not only that, but when it's blowing real hard and you're on a strange lake, you need to look at some ground. This particular bait here, you can cover some ground with it. Make long casts and just wind the fire out of it, especially if the water temperature is right. And I think the water temperature is right for this lure anytime it's above 45 degrees, in, uh, in, especially in your southern states. You get way south, it has to be a little bit warmer. Florida bass don't... Gee, I need one hit a minnow right there with the boat. I got one.
that's one of the great things about Texas lakes. All these lakes down here got this scattered mill foil and hydrilla in them. Come here to me. Boy, I'm scared of them treble hooks now. And when you've got that scattered grass, them little fingers of coontail or hydrilla or whatever you want to call that shallow vegetation, this bait will catch them. It don't catch them near as well in wide open water lakes that don't have the vegetation, but it's a good bait anytime the bass are in less than five or six foot of water. When fishing under extremely windy conditions, the best technique to try would be to tie on a bait such as a spinner bait, a lipless crankbait, or any other bait you can cover a lot of water quickly with. Fish any areas that might hold bass, realizing that fishing small to tail targets under these conditions can be very difficult. Well, hang on there, baby. Good one. Good. <laughs> what a j He's jumping like a tarpon. Oh, don't put too much pressure on them when they run out of that boat, because that's how you tear them off. Be ready to give them some line. You know, that's, that's where you make most of your boo-boos. When you're bass fishing, is you keep putting too much pressure on a fish that's got treble hooks. Always let him run. Wear him down good. Well, this one don't want to get wore down, and I'm getting tired of fooling with him. Gotcha. Got to keep them pliers handy when you're fishing with treble hooks. Hey, you get a face full of treble hooks in that fish, and you can't hardly pick them out without getting hooked. That ought to be a strike. Boy, it's a blowing. Oh, I mean, it is a blowing. Whoa! I mean, he like took the rod away from me. Way out there, coming up. I mean, that wind is a whistling, folks. Would you come around here and buy straight behind the motor? Well, just whoop me! Come here. <laughs> You're a bad bass, that's all I can say for you. Now, that's not an easy one. When they get them lips glued together, you better be careful. That's a good bass. I'm gonna fire up the big motor and float back down through that in a minute. That's a lot of fish right there. You know, one of the greatest ideas that I've seen come along in a long time, Mustad brought it out in treble hooks. The new triple grip hook Hey, that's not a joke. This hook actually does what it's supposed to do. If you'll notice, each one of these trebles is pointed in toward the eye of that lure. I'm gonna tell you what, when it makes contact, if you ever get the hook in a fish, when you set it, it buries and he can hardly ever throw that hook. And not only that, but watch this little trick. When you take the end of your finger and you push down on the point of that hook, if you'll notice, that hook didn't kick away from me it wants to bury. The angle of that point is made perfect so that you get super penetration. And not only that, you know, this little bait right here, that type of lure right there, the diamond shad, that's one of the hardest lures there is to keep fish on. You put them triple grips on there and you're gonna see a big difference in the amount of fish that you land. Mustad is one of the first hook companies to really listen to pro fishermen. You know, there's a lot of certain types of hooks that we need for different types of fishing. 
The new triple grip, it's outstanding. But not only that, the Fanaki series of hooks, which is a inline uh, worm hook or a lizard type hook, this thing is just like the kale hook that you use on your tube baits. Your point is perfectly in line with the eye of the hook. When you rig a lizard up, you rig that lizard up so that the point lays flat on the belly, and then you just prick it back into the lizard. Then when you get a bite, you don't have to set the hook. All you do is just kind of pull back on the fish, and he hooks himself. These hooks are so sharp that, I mean, yeah, I mean, they just stick to you. That's the way a hook should be. When you buy it, you shouldn't have to sharpen that thing. They should all come sharp like that right out of the package. Well, another good thing about this bait here is it's, it's simple for any bass fisherman. I mean, you don't have to be a real skilled fisherman to catch bass on a diamond shed. Now, occasionally, in certain cool water situations, there may be a very, very special technique that it takes to catch more fish. Like after a front, you might have to fish it down real slow in just a little bit deeper water. There's always little techniques that, that pay off at, uh, at times when fishing changes. Jerking it out of the grass and letting it fall. Boy, that's one sometimes that if you can just tick the grass and get it hung and just yank it out of it, and when, it, when you yank it out and it stops, bam, that's when they bite it. But most of the time, anybody can tie it on their rod and, and, and just go fishing and catch fish on it. George, I got that. Got him for now. Ooh, he's a good one. This one is a good one. I'm going to play him a little gentler. Try not to let him leap out of the water so much and see if I can land him because I'll tell you what, when you put a lot of pressure on a big fish with treble hooks, they can see how he jerks that head. When they yank that head back and forth like that, they tear them holes and fix them to come up. Let him run, give him a little line. Don't keep too much pressure on him because boy, if you horse them, with them little bitty hooks, I mean, now they're gonna get off. That limber rod, that glass rod helps a lot. See, he's just about to rip off on me. No! Gotcha. You know, he had done pulled that front hook plumb out. That's a good fish. Fun fish. Might have another one over there. Boy, occasionally you catch one, jump up and throw right back in that same area because sometimes you'll get another one. I'll tell you another thing. When you got fish a feeding like this, I mean, even when they're not feeding, they, you may have two or three or four bass there, or you may have a whole school of them, and you catch one of them. And when you catch him, and he goes to struggling, it excites that school, and you're liable to sit there and just catch a bunch of them. It's getting them excited. That's, that's how you catch lots of fish. A lot of these fish seem to be right toward the center of the cove. So that happens a lot in the fall of the year. That's, that's when they go... There, got him. I mean, that one there short strung me right by the boat. Right out in the middle. They, they get out there close to them channels in the fall, following them shad, and they don't really relate to the, to the shoreline cover. He is a good one. That is a good one. right out in the center. 
See, that's, that's where a lot of fishermen miss bass, by staying too close to the cover at times of the year. And fall is one of them. Normally the fall, the fish have already moved off the shoreline cover and they tend to go toward the channel. And a lot of times that's right out in the center of a pocket. And that's why a lot of times it pays you to stay way away, make long casts. Many fishermen miss bass by staying in too close to the cover during the fall of the year. Most bass tend to become channel related during this time of year. The best technique is to stay out away from the cover and then make long casts to your target. The area Larry is fishing today has been most productive in the two to four foot range near the creek channel that drops off into eight feet. Areas such as points or humps with scattered grass has definitely been the key to today's fishing. Oh, pretty good fish. That's a big, that's a good one there. This is a hoss. A hoss. without getting got, that's what I did. I mean, he, he, he got it crossways and was not going no place. Whoops. Ain't he pretty? That's a good way to end the day right there. Good quality fish. Man, what a good day. Hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. The wind has been terrible, but by picking the right bait, we figured out how to catch bass. Come back and see me next week, and I'll teach you how to bass fishermen.